Mr. President, Chers TV, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to speak today at the Enterprise 2020 Summit, and I remember very clearly, and you reminded it, the creation of Enterprise 2020 in October 2010, during the Belgian presidency of the European Union. A year earlier, when I was still Belgian Prime Minister, Enterprise 2020 was selected by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as a headline project for the Belgian presidency. It is rewarding to see that today 5,000 companies in 29 European countries participate in your project. In your own words, I'm quoting now, an enterprise 2020 is the company of the future, developing innovative solutions for the planet and its people. End of the quotation. In other words, it's a company which puts the large concept of corporate social responsibility, or CSR, into concrete action. Let's not be afraid to say CSR is about social innovation, about societal changes, about making them smarter, more sustainable, more inclusive. It's about companies and stakeholders coming together and sharing responsibility to develop new business models, new products, new services. It's about helping to address a wide range of sustainability challenges, whether social and economic, ecological or demographic. Not by paying lip service to lofty principles, no to concrete actions, to concrete commitments. Actions that go over and beyond legal obligations mostly on a voluntary basis, as a clear commitment to society. Through a sustainable use of resources, but also by investing in skills and people, by informing citizens, fighting corruption, improving gender diversity at all levels within your companies. Whether it is a cluster of companies in Finland jointly investing in diversity charters, or a network of French companies supporting programs to foster better education and equal opportunities, or German companies developing new management tools for a better use, efficient use of their resources. All these projects share something in common, smart, forward-looking entrepreneurship. What I find striking is the two key recipes for success that can be found in all the good practice cases you have selected. Cooperation and innovation. In fact, today, these two principles are also the key drivers for the European Union's collective actions. The need to move forward together and the need to find innovative solutions together. Together, together your network and the Union share a common concern. Restoring economic growth and employment is not only a common objective that we share, we also need to cooperate to get it done. European institutions and government can jointly decide upon framework, but you, the business community, are the ones who have to take action on the ground. And we share a common basis for our actions, the EU 2020 strategy, which is found on the belief that we can only grow in a sustainable manner if we also take into account social and ecological concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, CSR is not new in the Union. Already in 2006, the European Commission presented a strategy which has been updated last year and widely discussed within our Union. Today, already nine member states have adopted national action plans on CSR. And the Council has indicated already that it is important to further accelerate the development of such plans. Beyond these facts and these figures, we have recently seen a change of paradigm, in part as a consequence of the economic and financial crisis. Whereas in the past CSR was often considered as an extra burden for companies, on top of the many regulatory obligations, we see a growing conviction that there is a strong business case to be made in favor of CSR. 
and that is even rewarding for those who have supported CSR already for several years now, and is a strong incentive for those who are not yet in. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a mixture of values and interests. It's a benefit for all. The financial crisis and the moral crisis behind showed how necessary CSR is. It was a very hard lesson. What interests me in particular is the link between CSR and competitiveness. As the European Competitiveness Report 2008 has clearly shown, implementing CSR can bring benefits in terms of risk management, cost savings, access to capital and capacity to innovate. Certainly in challenging economic times, this is important. Restoring competitiveness is at the top of the agenda of the European Council and has been since the, in the, in this has been since the first summit I chaired in February 2010. On the one hand, the first priority is to restore financial stability. It is a necessity. Our efforts are bearing fruit, and the existential threat of the euro area is almost over. But in the meantime, we need to strengthen the fundamentals of our economic and monetary union. More integration will be needed. More cooperation is the way forward. I am currently preparing a report for the European Council of December precisely on this very question. Financial stability is necessary for growth, but alone it is not enough. It is not sufficient. We need further action to boost structural economic growth. And last June, the leaders of 27 member states agreed upon a compact for growth and jobs. It's a clear commitment to competitiveness, growth, and jobs. Last month, I called upon all the leaders again to lose no time in implementing these measures. Among the priorities, several stand out clearly. First of all, innovation plays a central role. We need to achieve this objective of 3% of GDP on innovation, research and development by 2020. The Horizon 2020 project, as well as the COSME program for the competitiveness of enterprises and SMEs are a good basis for this. We need to improve the access from science to the markets and focus on key enabling technologies. Second, we need a real, a new industrial policy. The Commission has recently presented a communication on this question. While improving the efficient use of resources and energy, companies need to be offered the right levers for further growth. There is no lasting growth without a strong base in manufacturing industry. The crisis has given us that hard lesson. And thirdly, we need the right framework for growth. Access to funding must be made easier, certainly in countries under market pressure. A lack of funding is a real impediment for growth, certainly for SMEs. We should also reflect further on fiscal measures that can enhance growth. And several important files are under discussion in the Council. The idea of a consolidated common corporate tax is just one example. Fourth, we will boost investment in energy, transport and ICT investment. The Connecting Europe facility, although under pressure in the context of the current MFF discussions, is an important tool for this. And fifth, we need major investment in employment. Further reform of the labour markets are absolutely necessary in order to get rid of the mismatches we still see all over Europe between offer and demand of labor. Lifelong learning, skills and training are absolutely crucial, in particular for young people. And finally, sixth, the potential of international trade for growth is considerable. Good trade arrangements, good trade strategies could create an additional growth of 2% and 2 million jobs. This is why we want to conclude free trade agreements with Canada and Singapore without delay. And we should also launch the negotiations with Japan soon and further explore opportunities 
for a new EU-US agreement. These measures are just a few examples from the Compact for Growth and Jobs. Several other important growth-enhancing measures have already been taken. Think about the important European patent, patent, which has finally been agreed. It will help companies, European companies, lower their costs to protect to protection innovation, to protect innovation by 10 times. Ladies and gentlemen, our future European budget should also underpin our common objectives for sustainable growth. Although the multi-annual financial framework we're currently working on only represents 1% of European GDP, it is still about almost 1 trillion euro over seven years. It will stimulate investments for growth that would otherwise not be possible. Investments in innovation, infrastructure and networks, but also in sustainable agriculture and more competitive regions. The European Council of last week has given me a mandate to continue the negotiations. It is not an easy task, but we should overcome existing divergences. There is too much at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, when we speak about enterprises and competitiveness, it's not only about profits, even if all need a profitable business model. Industry is about creating added value and shared values, thus about values, not only about value, but also about values. It is about creating a sustainable model, going from the pure shareholder approach to the larger stakeholder approach. It is about joining private investment with larger societal, societal responsibility and about thinking strategically in the midterm and the long term. It is about togetherness. Economies and societies with strong societal ties and relations based on trust are creating more happiness and prosperity. There is even a lot of evidence for this. I believe we are both driven by the search for structure and sustainable growth, and let's continue to work on this together. Thank you.